Hi guys, my name is Patrick, but you can call me 26. And what we're going to do today is we are going to talk about how you can use the new speech API introduced in iOS 26, right? So the obvious challenge in showing you exactly how this new speech API works is that you need to use a device, you need a physical device to show it, right? And currently I like using my iPhone uh, to record myself, right? So it serves as my camera, right? So since I'm using it as my camera, I recorded the app that you're about to see in action. I'm recording a certain podcast. And then afterwards, I'm going to go over the code, right? I'm just going to go over the code. I'm going to provide the link in the description, right? So this is the app in question. And what it does is it just allows you to record. And currently it's starting to record, but there's nothing playing in the background, right? Remember, this is a video that I've recorded on my phone screen, right? So what you're going to do is just run it. And then what it's going to do is you're going to have two options. You could stop, you could pause. And of course, when you start, you can play, right? And then you're going to see the transcript, right? We're going to convert the speech into text, right? And then it's going to give us a confidence level, right? So if we run this, you're going to see this is the Planet Money podcast. And you can see the words. It says this is the indicator from Planet Planet Money. I'm Waylon Wong and joined by Darian Woods, freshly back from his honeymoon. Congratulations. How was the trip? It was mixed. Most notably, uh, it was on the beach with my now wife, right? Now, the advantage of the text that you're normally given now is um, the API. It gives you a confidence of how well it does, right? And one thing you're going to notice, or you might not notice, is that if you take it does go back over the transcript of what it has done based on what you've said of how you've said it, it might retroactively correct it, right? If you take frequent breaks as you're speaking, it's going to show it with full stops, right? It's going to show the words in full stops, right? So it's going to try and transcribe in real time exactly how you conveyed the words, right? So maybe if we just run it again. I didn't record that part, right? But what happens is that if you do take breaks and whatnot, it will go back and see the transcript of what you are saying and try and correct it, right? So what you're going to do next is we are going to describe the, I'm just going to give you a walkthrough over the code. So let's go over the audio capture code, right? So the first thing we have is going to be pre-concurrency and this just tells the comp compiler, right? If you've not used, seen pre-concurrency, what it does is that it tells the compiler that this is an older framework and it should be more lenient when it's doing its concurrency checks, right? We have to be on iOS 26 for this. So that's just telling it that this was before the great switch concurrency, right? And then nine, uh, nine isolated here just means that this class doesn't belong to a specific actor and can be accessed by various concurrent contexts, right? And the next thing would be, uh, let's see, input tab stream. This is just a public facing stream uh, that allows you to capture that audio data chunks, right? And other parts of the stream can also listen in, right? Uh, input tab events continuation and this gives us both the audio buffer stream and also the audio time right so what you can actually uh, this allows us to control how we access it right because you noticed if you can look at the video that you had you could actually pause the recording of the talking and then continue afterwards right and then afterwards we also have the audio engine and this is the main engine for processing the audio and the audio session this is the app's overall audio behavior with the operating system right and then of course, that's the buffer size that we're going to use. You set it there and then we have an initializer and then we configure it all and you can just have the rest of it make sense. You can start capturing the input. And if you print the function when you're using it, right, you will get a lot of information, right? You'll get a lot of information that you can actually use on this, but it will give you more info. You could, if you wanted, record the relative gain on the microphone as a, as a user speaks, right? So if you wanted to record the, right, the decibel levels, it's all possible. If you use the audio engine, particularly, you can get the access to that, right? You can get access to a lot of information and what you're doing here when you run this functionality you're going to print it here and you're going to see very many options that you can use right and of course we can pause we can resume we can start you can stop capturing and then of course you need to go to the info and you need to make sure that you add to the privacy the microphone usage description right i remember when you're using the old sf the old api right you had to use add speech there's another privacy mission that you had to use with speech usage right i found that here you can just use microphone usage description and you give it a string and this just works perfectly right so that is a high level overview of the information about the audio capture right of course there's the engine to tell us that it started paused and stopped and this is particularly useful when it comes we use this particularly with the content view so that you can know which of the buttons to show right so if you are before you start you have the microphone view right if you can just reload the canvas here you can see the microphone view right so this gives us a chance we have a record button view and we have three types of record buttons right so depending on what state you use that's where you use it right that's with the audio capture and of course there are various errors right 
So that's going to be that. Uh, so I'm about to show you one of the features. You see, it starts by saying, now, where do I even start? And depending on your intonation, and then I breathe it inside, you get dots here. I got the pause. You see, then it changes from a comma to a question mark, all based on your intonations on what it thinks that you're doing, right? So that's what I mean when I say that the app does go back and check. And depending on how you're pronouncing words, it sort of tries and fixes things, right? So the next thing we want to do is look at the transcriber. Like I said, all the code is going to be available. So the transcription results are just going to be a public stream that it emits the transcription results. Then we have the speech analyzer, the co-component that processes audio from the module. And then we have the speech transcriber, the module responsible for actual speech to text. And then of course, the various options you could have towards the optimal audio format that the speech framework prefers, right? Then we have the input stream, private stream used to feed audio buffers, uh, input continuation. Uh, this is the controller for the input stream. We use this to push new audio buffers and touch them and add them. And then of course the preset and you can have a look at all this particularly with the api just have a look at the api and you'll see a lot of this right so those are many of the options and you use the best available audio format and whatnot and then you deinitialize it and then you finish the analysis session you can all that at the end when you get rid when you stop it and then you have the real-time transcription and the stream stream audio to transcriber right so we take the audio and put in the transcriber right those are the various functionality and a lot of this is just stuff to do with audio formats and whatnot right particularly with this right uh, yeah so basically and then of course you get the errors right so that is the main the heart of the app those two are the hearts of the app and the next thing would be the view model right so we just add a view model and here what you can do is you have a number of locales that you can pick right so in my case i'm using english and my region is the united states you could pick whatever other region you want just a type alias for the time that i used audio capture state a lot of this is just uh need to do to make sure that it's working the task and whatnot various this is all self-explanatory the code is available start real-time transcription pause resume real-time transcription stop reset transcription right so there are two transcripts right the volatile transcript and the finalized transcript right so the volatile is the one that it does it tries to do real time and then based on maybe the confidence levels on how you're speaking and how you add to it it up with the finalized transcript right then we set up the transcriber and whatnot, and the rest of it is explanatory. It's explanatory set up audio capturer and the error, right? Now for our content view, we just pass in the view model. The navigation stack is available here. And we also have uh, code buttons with an action. So depending on whether you want the, what's it called? Depending on whether you want the, what you're going to do, right? You could have the um, microphone, when you're starting then you could pause it and you could stop it right so repeat depending on what you want to do you're going to see a different record button then the metrics view just shows you the time right we do have access to the actual time that has elapsed since the app started right the uh, audio started being recorded right so that's basically the app pretty straightforward uh, a lot of it is boilerplate that you need to put in place and that's how you handle it right now the interesting thing that you will notice is that if you compare it to the previous api this does give you access to a lot more information but the previous api required less lines of code right so that's one trade-off right uh price of progress right but this one gives you a lot of nitty-gritties like you wanted access to i believe um, this one gives you access to things like the volume levels of the audio being captured which might be particularly good if you have a camera app or you have an audio app and whatnot right so that's the speech api thank you for watching subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next one